All right, everybody's done a video on these things, but I thought it'd be fun. Uh, this is an antenna tuner. Uh, I'm sure you've seen these. Uh, there's a whole bunch of relays and some inductors, and it, it's just a switch capacitor thing. It uh, Here's all the capacitors that it gets. So, so it's already loaded, too. All of the surface mount components are loaded. You just have to wind the toroids. So here's all those capacitors that are switched. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now these are all, so these are the switched ones, so, well, no, they're all the same value. They're all, so they all say one micro. That's not right. Oh, here they are. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so 10 puff, 22 puff, 47 puff, 100, 220, 470. One nanofarad, so those are the ones that are switched in, and then there's these uh, inductors that are switched in. So one, two, three, four, five, six inductors that are switched in. So the nice thing about this kit is this little microprocessor, but it has a uh, it has a little uh, OLED display that tells you what's going on and stuff. So um, my original intent was to film a really cool video on the Nano VNA watching the um, antenna tuner on the Smith chart as it's operating. And uh, I'm going to have a hard time doing that because of what I've read so far. This, this board really needs about 5 or 10 watts on the uh, SWR bridge before it can actually make a decision. So um, I might have to trick it. <laughs> I might have to trick it. So anyway, I thought I'd build it anyway. Uh, a bazillion people have built these things, and uh, anyway, it'll be fun to do. I mean, I like building kits, obviously. I like building kits, so yeah, let's go ahead and build this one. Uh, I probably won't film a lot of it. Uh, it's pretty basic, a bunch of relays and a bunch of relays and stuff. But we'll put it out. On, we'll get it out onto a board. Uh, a board out onto a tray. Everybody loves my tray. Uh, if you want to get one of these trays, you can get them at Harbor Freight. You, know, you want to play along at home. Nice thing about these trays is uh, it's got this opening, so you can sort things out and then put them back into the bag. It's got this little opening on one side, so that's what they're that's what they're for, and that's why I bought it. And it's good sometimes, and other times the things just fall right in that gap and end up on the floor. So probably need two trays, one that's solid all the way around, and this one. So yes, yeah, so all we need to do is put on the Put on the relays, so lots and lots of relays, so yeah, stick on the relays. Wind some toroids. Da, 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 da. Put on some connectors. Uh, I don't know why we have... I don't know why we have this. I don't know, maybe that's a pro for programming? I don't know. Uh, and the only other really thing is uh, this. Little these sometimes these are called uh, pig snouts or um, do I know, do, do I know the other name anyway pig, pig snouts <laughs> uh, this is the uh, SWR bridge so I did a video on SWR bridges um, and this is its little baby brother so yeah okay okay I guess the relays go in on this side we'll put the relays on first. It will look like it's actually something. So, I guess I could tell a story. Nothing else to do. Even if the uh, project is a failure, you get to hear a story. Hmm. This is not easy. There's tiny little holes, and the leads are kind of bent. Jeez. Okay. Well, this is not going well, is it? I need some tweezers. Jeez. It has to be exactly in there, otherwise it doesn't go. Wow. Okay. Get some solder. And my solder iron should be hot. So I have a nice story about my grandmother. Never met my grandmother. She was dead by the time I was around. She died 
way before I was born. Murdered, actually. <laughs> but that's a different story. Um, and she was on the Indian side. She was half, half Kuruk Indian. And uh, my dad said she was kind of a, kind of a medicine woman, right? She, she knew all the herbs and remedies and stuff from the original teachings. And uh, she was very poor. It was a house, a housemaid kind of a live-in, you know, cook made type of for the rich families in town, that kind of thing. Sounds like downtown Ab Downton Abbey. Um, yeah, there's a picture of her. There's a very famous, uh, not famous, but unknown. If pe people, people from around there would have, would have known the house. It's in a place called Arcata, California. Arcata, California is the uh, town that my university was at. Humboldt State. Go Lumberjacks. Um, so, yeah, so my grandmother. So like I said, she wasn't very wealthy, quite poor. And she suffered from genetics of being an Indian and she couldn't she shouldn't shouldn't drink alcohol let's put it that way she should not drink alcohol because doesn't help her at all anyway so she she ended up being a drunk and did what drunks do get into trouble so she was at a bar one night in uh, Eureka and um, that's where I was. That's where I was born, actually. Um, so she was in a bar, and there was some kind of scuffle. I don't know exactly what the argument was about, but she wasn't a small woman. She was quite a large woman. She would be able to hold her own in a bar fight. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. She was arguing with some guy who. Um, I don't know what their I don't know what their problem was. Anyway, she got into this argument and uh, a brawl occurred, and uh, in the end, she was in jail, and the fellow she was fighting was in jail. I mean, they couldn't figure out whose whose fault it was. Whatever. Anyway, both of them ended up in jail, and uh, the. Uh, they went before the judge. The judge was kind of tired of them. I think he probably knew both of them by then. And he gave him a deal. He said, uh, you could either do, I forget what it was, 60 days in jail or 90 days in jail. Or so, I forget what it was. There's some number of days in jail. Or you can leave town. So he gave him that option. <laughs> you can leave town. And they thought that was the better option. So they decided to get married. <laughs> yes, they decided to get married. So I don't know what the argument was about, but I guess they saw the humor in it at the end and decided they would get married. I've got great photographs of a, a, a photograph that they had on their wedding day. Uh, and... Uh, they do look, look like the couple. And the funny thing was, like I said, she was, she was not a small woman, but he was a small man. <laughs> he was a real scrawny little dude. Oh man, he was gonna lose that fight. Um, anyway, uh, funny, funny, funny. And uh, so anyway, I've got this photograph. So, so the deal was they had to leave town. <laughs> and uh, so they did. They got married, and then the next day they got on a steamer, and the steamer went to San Francisco. So they left Eureka and went to San Francisco. And uh, I don't know what happened while they were in San Francisco. I, I, I don't know any part of that story. Um, I do know that 
the little scrawny guy disappeared. I don't I don't know where he went, but he disappeared and she ended up in Sacramento and doing what she knew how to do, taking care of houses and doing the maid type thing again. And uh, she met my grandfather there. So the first guy was not my grandfather. The first guy was just some skinny dude <laughs> that she had a fight with and married. Um, so I guess she divorced, divorced that guy and was in Sacramento and uh, met this other guy. And he was my grandfather. And so my father was born in Sacramento. And the whole Sacramento thing fizzled out at some point and everybody moved back to Eureka. I guess the judge wasn't there anymore. And uh, anyway, she moved back to, uh, she moved back to Eureka and my dad moved back to Eureka with her, I guess. Well, my dad, originally my dad was sent to the farm. So he, I told you about the farm story of my uh, horse thief murderous. Anyway, he went to that farm and uh, cause grandma was not a nice person and uh, it was not healthy for my father to be around her any longer cause she tried to kill him. <laughs> so not a good thing. Uh, once again, probably drunk. Anyhow, that was grandma. Uh, never met the lady. Uh, she ended up having problems at a bar once again, later in life. I don't know how much later, but later in life and ended up, uh, in some type of altercation at a bar. And it ended, up, it ended up getting shot in the street dead. I don't know much about that story either, but anyway, she was murdered in the street. A couple blocks away from home. So, now you know my grandma. My other grandma was boring, so don't have any stories about her. She was an okay lady. stop and think of, uh, I should write these things down. Well, now they're on YouTube. Is YouTube going to last forever? Do you think these videos that I do now will be there for an eternity? Will my grandchildren be able to go watch MSI guy and say, Hey, that was my great, 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 great grandfather. I don't know. Do things live on? to perpetuate. Yeah, I don't know. Strange. I know there's a big deal with, uh, you know, estates used to be something that, you know, you needed to sell the house and worry about the finances and stuff. But now estates include digital media. What do you do with the digital media? And how is that? How is that done? I don't know, kind of weird. <laughs> oh man, this one's all bent. Get these things bent. All right, there you go. It's all put together nicely. And uh, all the other components on. All I need now is all the uh, 
all inductor. So I've got these toroids here and I've got a bunch of wire. Three different sizes of wire, interesting. Um, and over here, some of them are air, air wound and then some of them have toroids, I believe. Oops. I believe these, these have double toroids here. Oh man, tighten this down. There we go. And these have double toroids, so yeah, double toroid, double toroid, single toroids. Yeah, anyway. And then the little pig nose goes here. Yeah, so need to figure out how to wind the windings. So I'm, I've been told <laughs> that all the information I need is on the schematic. So is that true? L's. L1 and L2 are six millimeter air cores, 0.8 millimeter wire, four turns and seven turns. That's easy enough. L3 and L4 use the uh, toroid, 0.8 millimeter wire and an eight turn and a 13 turn. Oh, here they all are. That one and that one are air. And then these are eight turn, 13 turn. And then uh, L5, you actually have two of them, two. <laughs> Why did I do that? Yep, two of them, oh, L5. <laughs> there's two of them, uh, goes on the core and there's 13 turns around a double core and you have to make two sets of those. So there you go. I do know everything I need to know. So everything is on 0.8 millimeter wire. Now, why do I have a bunch of other wire? Uh, I think this little wire here is for the pig nose. I think these go together. Um, hmm. But what about this little one? What about those little ones? Why do I have little wire? I, I, I don't know. That looks like about 0.8 millimeters to me. Okay. Anyway, uh, other things about the schematic, the microprocessor is a PIC 16F. 1938. There's a three terminal regular, five volts, 12 volts comes in, you need five volts for the processor, and all of the FETs are two and seven thousands, as I would do. And, um, hmm. And, yeah. There was one diode. It's a protection diode. I had to. I had to load that on just a like a one in four thousand type thing to protect the get the polarity right. There you go. All right. So let me start winding some toroids. Okay, it's all together, and um, it's looking good. I put the little display on it, so the display's right over there. And so we can apply twelve volts to this thing. Where's my where's my twelve volts? We'll turn that on. And the little board, the board has a little flash screen and then it powers up. We can watch a flash screen again. Let's see. ATU 100. Of course, this is the Chinese version. Um, and let's see, what else can I tell you? So, uh, so like I said, I had high hopes on showing this thing on a VNA, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I'm still going to try. So, uh, one thing, let's see, can I get this? Oh, this out just a little bit. I think you can still read read the display. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I didn't load the SWR bridge. I'm going to inject signals into the SWR bridge myself. <laughs> so, see how that works out. So I'm going to connect ground. So the way that the SWR bridge is, it's looking for it rectifies some of the signal and gives this DC voltage, and then the microprocessor reads that DC voltage and says, oh, that's, that's so many watts, right? So there's a point here and a point here, and if I apply a voltage here, I can trick it into saying it's 10 watts, okay? And that takes 3.1 volts. If I put in 3.1 volts, it says it's, uh, it's 10 watts, okay? Now, it says the SWR is perfect. 1.00. Now, why does it say the SWR is perfect? Because the 
detector on the return path is not does not have any voltage going into it. So it's reading it's reading three volts going in, and it says ah oh, that's ten watts, and it's reading zero volts coming back, and it says oh that's nothing. So the SWR is perfect. It's one to zero. Now if I inject uh, onto the other side a voltage, so let me do that here. I'm going to inject a voltage on the other side. Uh, You hear that? It tried to tune. So it said, ah, the SWR was 1.66, and it's going to try to make that better. So it went through its thing to try to make that better, and it never got better, right? <laughs> so I can change the voltage on the return path, um, and there I've made it better, 1.1, uh, 1.0. I can go the other opposite direction, I can make it worse. Okay, 1.6. 2.4 and it says, oh, 2.4, no good. I better do an auto tune. So it's trying to tune here, but it didn't, nothing happened, right? So it's saying, okay, well, it says that uh, your SWR one, two and a half, you're gonna lose a bunch of power because it's coming back. You're only getting 50% going the forward direction and, and, and there's a bunch coming back in the reverse direction. So you're only getting six watts at the antenna. So it's doing some calculations for you, which is kind of cool. I can up the, uh, Let's see here. I can up the SWR. I went over the top. Let's see here. Yeah, I went too far. And, I'll, and uh, I, I put in too much voltage and uh, just kind of didn't know what to do with that. So it said, nope, that's an error. Um, so yeah, so. Okay, so I can kind of trick it into thinking it has a particular SWR. I haven't, I haven't put on the switch yet, but there's a switch over here. Let me just use this little piece of wire here to trick the switch. There we go. So I'm going to put a switch there and that may, that says, you know, force the tune. So, you know, tune is, is that, is that switch there. So I need to insert that. But uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me play with a little bit and see if I can get some reasonable picture on a VNA and uh, see if we can watch this thing, at least try to watch it do something. Um, I think for me to do what I wanted to do, uh, I don't think it's gonna be possible because you can't single step this thing. Um, I would have to pull out the microprocessor and hack into it myself and control these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 15 relays um, myself. And I just kind of don't feel like doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see if uh, let's see if we can at least get a picture of something. Okay, well, this is about as good as I can get. It's not very satisfying, but it shows you that it is doing something. So I have um, uh, I have it set up so that there's just an open, so there's no nothing there at all, and there's some delay. There's some uh, phase delay, so it's it's traveling around the outside of the. Uh, uh, outside of the Smith chart, so it's it's here. I've put the VNA into CW mode, so it's not sweeping. It, it, it thinks just just a steady state. So if anything changes, we should see it. Um, I've tricked the uh, SWR bridge to uh, C10 watts with a SWR of 2.4. So when I tell it to tune, I'm going to reach down here and tell it to tune. And you can see it's it's trying lots of combinations. It's, it's zipping around. Um, it, you don't see it zip towards the center because it's not finding any solutions. It's just trying random things. Um, now, if I try to stop it halfway through, so how did I stop it halfway through? I I, I told it the SWR was good by changing the voltage on the SWR pin uh, on the return path pin. So it stopped there. Now I'll let it do its full cycle. Oh, it won't go because it sees an SWR of 1.02, uh, so it won't even go. So I have to trick it again into thinking it has a high SWR, then it'll go. So now it's stopped over there. So you can see it as it is doing something. So I guess it's kind of fun to watch it, but it's not really telling us, telling us much. Um, 
but you can kind of see the individual, the 15 really is like one, two, three, four, five, right? Capacitors and inductors as it goes around the Smith chart. It's going so fast though, you just, you just can't see it. So I think that I've done demonstrations before on manually tuned uh, antenna tuners and, and, and um, uh, those are much better videos for, for showing what, a, what, what antenna tuners do, um, adding capacitance and adding inductance and, and tuning things, tuning things in. But, um, this thing it looks like it's going to do what it, what it's intended to do. So I need to, I guess, continue to continue to build it up and maybe, I don't know, maybe use it on something someday. I'm not sure how many watts these are things are good there. I don't, maybe 100 watts. I'm not sure. Um, I think so. I think these are good. I think these are good for 100 watts. Obviously, I'm putting 10 watts through right now. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it's a, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It, it wasn't. It didn't turn out the way that I wished, um, but uh, it does show you something. Maybe you learned something about the SWR bridge thing, the two different voltages. Um, let me show you what I was doing there. Uh, so here's the input and the output, and here's the SWR bridge. There's there's uh, a ten to one coils. There's there's one one turn and then ten turns, and the uh, there's two rectifying diodes. So this one rectifies it onto this capacitor, and this one rectifies it onto this capacitor. This 50 ohm loads here. So this one generates a voltage, and this one generates a voltage, right? So these are just peak detectors, and they generate voltages. And then those two signals go over to the microprocessor and read, are read by the A to D um, on two different channels. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm injecting a voltage here, and I'm injecting a voltage here. And uh, by injecting the voltage on the forward path, I can tell it it's got forward power. And by injecting a voltage on the return path, I'm saying, oh, you've got reflected power. And that's the way I get this uh, 10 watts and this uh, uh, 2.65 uh, SWR by injecting. If I don't inject any signal on the, uh, uh, on the return, then it says you've got a perfect SWR. And then when I inject signal into uh, the reverse direction, it says, oh, your SWR just went up. Uh, you know, I should do something about that, so you can tell it to auto-tune. <laughs>